Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast. We are on the final episode of a series we've been doing called Jesus' Letters to Leaders, a study of the letters Jesus wrote in the, the book of Revelation to the leaders of the churches. And we've been looking at some amazing leadership principles when we look at those, le- those letters from the perspective of Jesus speaking to a leader. I'm going to get to uh, number seven then, to the final church he wrote to, the church in Laodicea. And this principle, kingdom leaders know the power of Jesus' dependence. Now this is interesting because kingdom life and and kingdom values are completely different and normally opposite to those in the world. In fact, in the world, there's a celebrated ideal of someone who is uh, the relies on themselves, they're independent. And yet in the kingdom of God, it's completely rejected. In fact, we'll see it's one of the most dangerous heart conditions there is. So let's get into the Revelation. In uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, it says, To the angel or messenger of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. So three parts to this Revelation. Remember once again, I know I say it every week, but first comes Revelation, then comes transformation. That's why Jesus always starts the letters with a revelation of himself, because when you catch the revelation, you will naturally begin to be transformed. So three parts. Number one, he says, from the Amen. Now that word Amen is actually usually translated very truly. And we're going to look, for example, in the book of John, 25 times Jesus said to people, he has a couple of examples. In John 1 verse 51, he said, he then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Basically he was saying, amen, you will see. It. In other words, he's trying to establish the absolute truth of what he's about to say. John 3 verse 3, Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. In other words, Jesus speaks in absolutes. It's almost like binary, one, zero, yes or no, no middle ground, you in or you out. Now, the world doesn't like that. We're moving more and more into an age where people don't like right or wrong. They like relative. Maybe it's right for you, but it's wrong for him, but it's what feels right. Even the concept of male and female, which is so binary, has now become blurry. The world doesn't like binary. Jesus says, I am the amen. He takes it further. Next part of the revelation, he says, Jesus, the faithful and true witness. Now, when Pilate spoke to Jesus, John 18, verse 37, you are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. I like that, on the side of truth. Almost reminds me of a sports match where uh, in soccer or rugby, for example, you have onsides or offsides. Here's the line and you're either onside or offside. Jesus said, if you're on the side of truth, you'll listen to me. Once again, there's an absolute. There's a line in the ground saying you in or you out, you faithful and true witness or you compromising. Jesus is establishing this revelation of the absoluteness of Jesus. And it carries on then, the ruler of God's creation. Now, Laodicea, this particular city, was something of a leader and ruler in the province and in that surrounding region. They were economic and judicial leaders. People were supposed to listen to them. Well, Jesus comes and says, I'm the leader of all creation. Once again, if the leader of all creation is speaking to you, either you are submitting because you are a subject or you are a rebel, in which case that makes you an enemy. There's no middle ground. You in or you out. So what's the big idea here? The whole truth that Jesus is trying to establish is that Jesus is the 100% truth, the 100% authority. He is 100% king. He's the absolute, the binary, the in or the out. No gray areas, no middle ground. I love, someone once gave this quote, either Jesus is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. There's no middle ground. So with that as the setup of the revelation of Jesus, what's the correction? Well, Revelations 3, 15 to 17 says, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I'm rich, I've acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. So what's the problem in Laodicea? Exactly that. They're not binary. They are lukewarm. They're trying to live in the middle ground with one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world, half under the authority of Jesus, half doing their own thing. And that's the challenge that Jesus is rebuking them for. So what's the key to unlock the letter? In verse 17 says, you say I'm rich, I've acquired wealth, and 
do not need a thing. There we go. That little phrase, I believe, unlocks this entire letter. The heart of what Jesus was challenging them as leaders and as a church is the attitude of self-reliance. I don't need a thing. Now, this particular city, Laodicea, was particularly known for that. In fact, there was an earthquake uh, all the way back in, uh, in AD 60. And uh, most of the city was destroyed through the earthquake. And the Roman Empire came to offer help. And they said, no thanks, we will fix it ourselves. And they did. There's that sense of self-reliance that Jesus is challenging them with. Either are you going to trust in yourself or are you going to trust in God? But this church was trying to do both. And that's what Jesus was trying to correct. Self-sufficiency is the most dangerous spiritual characteristic there is. Remember what Matthew 5 verse 3, the first and probably the most important of the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That heart attitude of I don't need a thing is the very thing that shuts the door of kingdom help and kingdom power and kingdom love in the face of our leadership. So even Paul, who had his thorn in his flesh, we don't know what it was, but that very thorn taught him, don't rely on yourself, trust in his power, made Paul lean into God, and God said, my power rests upon your weakness. So what about repentance then? Well, in Revelation 3, 18 and 19, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see those whom I love are rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Well, the big understanding was here was that everyone came to Laodicea. They were known for their fine, their, their black woolen clothing, uh, the special ointment they had for their eyes. In other words, everyone came to them to have their needs met. And Jesus it says you need to repent and stop expecting people to come to you. You need to start coming to me to recognize that Jesus is the source of our strength, our salvation, our power, and our breakthrough. So uh, is it harsh? Well, those whom I love are rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. So what was Jesus expecting from this church? To me, it's summed up in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. I want to ask you this question. Number one, who do you really trust in? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This church was trying to trust the Lord and themselves at the same time, and that was the challenge. Jesus rebuked them for. Then we've got to decide, do I want to live a pragmatic or prophetic lifestyle? Lean not on your own understanding. In other words, it's not just your reason, your logic, and your skill, but what is God saying? And this church had to make a decision. Are we going to continue with this worldly, pragmatic lifestyle, or are we going to step into the prophetic where we trust and lean into God and His Word and begin to do things God's way? So many of God's ways and commands are so different. God says, uh, you'll receive to the measure you give. How do you get yourself out of financial difficulties? You give your way out. Does that make sense? Absolutely not. But are you going to be pragmatic, or are you living a prophetic lifestyle? And then... In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Someone once said, you surrender yourself to breakthroughs in the kingdom of God. And so, the big challenge, are you living a self-sufficient, pragmatic life, or a Jesus-dependent, prophetic life? This lesson is huge for kingdom leaders. Self-reliance is a dangerous thing in the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said, I can do nothing by myself. I can only do what I see my Father doing. That's our strength. That's our victory. And that's the lesson that I hope that we're going to learn from this church. So I hope this series helped. Hope this helped. Can't wait. Next week we'll begin a brand new series. Until then, may the Lord bless you and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like the notes that come along with this episode or any one of our past episodes, you can visit outlookchurch.co.za forward slash mustard seed leadership where you can see all our past episodes, all the resources and notes that go along with this. Until next time, keep growing.